Okay, we're coming up on the minute. Uh, I guess I'll just start now because you have a lot to cover today. So good morning uh, or afternoon, depending on where you're dialing in from. This is the second day of our conference, and we're going to be starting off track one with thanks for nothing. Uh, no ability selection, never great reports. Hope you enjoyed that because I've been practicing the delivery of this uh, title for some time. All right, so uh, Jessica is going to be uh, presenting this. So thank you very much for coming in to talk about this. Uh, this will be an hour session. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, our champion sponsors, Emerald Data, Equinox, and Mobius. Uh, Equinox being the platform sponsor and Emerald Data being captioning. Uh, excuse the noise outside. And I do have a live captioning for this um, track uh, and session that I'll be periodically posting in the chat. Uh, this is recorded. It will be available on our YouTube after the conference, and the slides will become available on our website after the conference, too. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in chat. You can do it in chat or Q&A, and I'll make sure that Jessica gets them throughout her presentation. And with that said, here's Jessica. All right. I will now go ahead and share my screen. All right. Allow that. All right. Can we all see? I don't have uh, I don't have chat anymore, so I hope we're all good. Yes, it's <laughs> available. Awesome. Me too. Okay, so um, hello, uh, I am Jessica Wolford. I am the Evergreen Systems Manager at uh, Biblia Nation. Uh, we are a consortium of public school and special libraries in Connecticut. Uh, I have been working with the Evergreen Reporter. Uh, for a long time. <laughs> I've been with Bibliomation for 12 years now, and I've been do building reports with the reporter probably uh, about 11 of those 12 years. So it's, uh, it's, I have a lot of experience, um, but I'm still learning things all the time. Uh, I've learned some stuff while putting this presentation together. Uh, which is one of the great reasons to do presentations because I always learn things and I learn things from the audience as well. Um, so I do want to say right out the gate here, uh, there will be some SQL SQL uh, stuff that we talk about in this presentation. Uh, if you've been to any of uh, Chris Sharp's presentations about the reporter, uh, he likes to say that, you know, it's it's very helpful to know uh, SQL when working with the reporter. Uh, the, and this session is primarily for people who build their own report templates. But if you're just a person who runs reports, uh, it might also give you a little bit of a background into how things all hang together. Um, and so if you're not uh, very comfortable with SQL, which is a uh, standard query language, uh, the language that is used to query databases, which Evergreen has a database in the back end uh, that pulls up all of the information that uh, when you would come across in the client or in the reporter, um, <clears throat> then you might be a little bit confused, but I hope to sort of smooth over those edges and we have some resources at the end of the presentation to help you fill in those gaps if, uh, if you indeed have them. So let's start out with some definitions here. What is nullability? Well, the first thing you might say to me is, Jessica, that's not a word. <laughs> and uh, you would be correct. In the, in the English language, you go to merriamwebster.com, you type in nullability, it goes, yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, but we can, it, like computer science likes to sort of combine words to, uh, to make something meaningful. Uh, so basically what it is, what it's saying is just what it says, the ability for something to be null. Uh, null being zero or nothing, basically. And ability being the quality or state of being able to. So in short, the ability to be zero or not present. Uh, in Evergreen, we know that some fields can be null and some fields can't. So, for example, you can have a bib record that has no volumes or items attached. So those things in relation to the bib record would be null. Uh, and But we can't have an item that has no, no volume and we can't have a volume that has no record. So those are some examples of things that might be null. And then even on the item level, uh, there could be a item that has 
lots and lots of alerts or something, for example, tags. I'm using tags as kind of my stock example uh, in the, as, as we go through some examples. Um, so we, we can have a volume that has lots and lots of those things, or we can have or an item that has lots and lots of those things, or we can have an item that has none of those things. And sim similarly with statistical categories, uh, an item can even have a null circ modifier, but it can't have a null shelving location, can't have a null call number. Uh, so we know that we have some fields that, that, uh, where that's, that's true and, and, and some fields where that's not. Uh, so the nullability selection allows us to have more control over what fields sh uh, those fields show up in our report. Um, so, so yeah, my next point is, do we want a particular field to be able to show up in the reports as null or do we not want that? And uh, the nullability selection option in the Evergreen Reporter allows us to have that kind of control. So when do we use it? Uh, well, it's pretty much when, when, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, or you can, you can, once you understand it, you can start using it, right, you know, sort of preemptively. Uh, when you know you want a certain type of type of uh, nullability selection on a particular ta uh, joined table. So, for example, uh, if you're running a report that lists items with a specific ta item tag, and your report is giving you back that information plus the items with no item tag, that mean then you're going to need nullability selection. Uh, or when you're not getting back values that you do want. For example, you've added circulation modifier name to as a field in your report template. Uh, but when you run that template, you're getting back only the items that have circulation modifiers on them. In that instance, you may need, I put may in tiny little letters, you may need nullability. That might, it might help you out. Uh, this, sort of type of, of nullability selection uh, comes with more limitations than the other type. It's much easier to say, I don't want to see these things than it is, I do want to see them. Uh, and we'll talk about that as uh, what those limitations are uh, as we go through. So here starts the discussion of the SQL stuff. When you build a report template, you are writing the bones of a SQL query on the Evergreen database. So here's an example of a very simple report template. So we're starting off with the combined age and active circulations source, uh, and we're showing shelving location. We've changed the name of the shelving. This would have been name, but, uh, but I changed the, the label to shelving location. And um, we're showing just a count of the number of circulations that that shelving location has had. Um, and there's no date filters or anything in here to sort of complicate this. We're only using the circulating library as the, as the filter on this. So we go to run this, we choose our whatever our library, whatever that might be. And if you've not seen this before, uh, on the output screen, there's a, there are three options, uh, depending on what, uh, what um, output options you've selected. Um, but there, there's probably by default three options being, you know, tabular data, Excel data, uh, and then um, the HTML table data. And then there's a fourth option that says debugging output. And this is what you get if you click on that. And this can be very, very helpful for uh, determining how a report is is being built. <clears throat> so this shows you the query that the report is doing when it's being run. The, now the more the most important option uh, thing to talk about when we're talking about nullability is joins, which uh, uh, to be honest, like took me a long time to really understand. Uh, as I as I've learned SQL throughout my my career here, um, <clears throat> and the type of join that you do 
uh, determines that the, the it joins. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me let me start it over on this. So the in SQL joins allow you to link two tables together. So we were talking before about bib records, volumes, items. Um, you do a join. There, there. Those are three kind of separate tables, and the bib record might be even more. Um, but there's the item table, then there's the volume table, and then there's the bib record table. So those things, as you're doing, as you're building a report, get sort of linked together so you can show all of the information in relation to the item or the bib record or the volume uh, so that you can see all of that in the same place together. And the type of join that you do determines what data can show up with a null value in your results. And nullability selection, as I've said before, allows you to control the type of join that you are making on the linked data sources off of the main source in the template. And therefore, the data that can show up as null values in your results. <clears throat> so under outstanding joins can kind of help you avoid using nullability if you, if you know what those joins are, uh, but it can also help you to determine whether you, whether you need it or not. So, here are the types of joins that are available to us when we are writing a SQL query or building a report template in this case. So this is the main table. When we're talking about the reporter, that would be like the main source that you choose. And this would be the joined or the linked table. So if we're doing an inner join, then we can only see stuff that has values in both the main table, so the main, the main table on the, the core source, and then the joint table, so the table that's being joined to it. So for example, going back to the example about the, um, about the, <clears throat> about the circ modifier. If I'm saying, if I'm doing, if, if the circ modifier is interjoined, if the circ modifier table is interjoined on my main table, then I'm only going to see items that have a circ modifier. Uh, so, get that. If it's a left outer join, then I can see everything that is in the main table plus everything that it, that appears in the right table. So if it's a left outer join on the, on the circ modifier table from the item table, then I can see everything in the item table uh, plus all of the data from the circ modifier table as well. If it's a right outer join, then I can see everything from the from the right table. So in this case, everything uh, that's in that circ modifier table, like uh, it's got some crazy stuff in there. Uh, it's a, and then also stuff that, uh, that appears in the main table, but only if it has a value in the circ modifier table as well. And there's better examples of this that I will share as we go along. Okay. All right. So going back, I want I do want to go back a little bit to the uh, the SQL query that that's got here. So you can see that this is an inner join on the asset copy location table from here, it, from the all circulation table. So it's only going to show me. Uh, items that are in that have a copy location. So it's only going to show me copy locations that have circulations um, and circulations that have a copy location associated, which should be everything. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to see all of my copy locations listed, uh, plus whether or not they have circulated at all, this would not be this, I would have to think, rethink the way that I'm building this, this template. Okay, so 
then how do we translate the knowledge that we now have of those joins to how nullability selection works in the reporter? Well, you can actually look this up. You can look up what kind of join is being made on a particular table by looking at uh, the FMIDL uh, uh, page here. Um, <clears throat> and there's a better there's a better word for it. Uh, somebody can help me out. <laughs> uh, if you know the class, and I just learned this at the beginning of the of the conference and during the pre-conference, uh, the IDL is getting a lot of play. Was getting a lot of play during that. Um, you can look up the class uh, here as well if you know it. Uh, chances are you might not, uh, but you can also just kind of search it for the field ID or the uh, the, what the whatever the reporter label is. Uh, unless it's something like item, in which case you're going to get a lot of stuff. So uh, you might want to search for just the column that you're interested in in that in that source instead. Uh, and then you're the, when you're reading this, I'll, I'll give an example next. <clears throat> you're going to look to see if it's got a what what the name of it is. And then you'll look at a little section underneath in the links area, and you can see if it if the rel type is has a that means it's an inner join, and if it's has many or might have, then it's a left outer join. All right. So, and when you're looking at the reporter itself and building a report, uh, this is how it sort of translates out. If it says non nullable, that's in, that's turning it in, turning whatever you're looking at into an inner join. If it says parent nullable, that depends on the default join, but it's usually a right join. And if it's child nullable, then uh, it's it's usually a left join that you're creating there. I haven't seen any examples. Um, in the IDL where it's a, a right join is is being made on any of these tables. But if somebody knows of an example of that, uh, feel free to say so. Okay, so here's an example uh, based on what we were looking at before. Um, so here is the IDL class that is related to the combined agent active circulations reporting source. And we're looking specifically at shelving location here. So we can see that the name of it is copy location and that it's it's linked is the data type. Uh, we have one question. Is it possible if you could maximize that somehow? Oh yeah, sorry about that. Oh boy, okay, sorry. Let's see. You did, if you do the full mm -hmm. slideshow. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah, I, I think it might help. Yeah, okay. Thanks everybody. All right, so here is the, that uh, in the links field under here, um, the copy, here's the copy location entry. And you can see the rel type is a has a, so that will indicate that this by default is going to be an inner join on that table. So here is a use case of when you might want to use nullability. I want to get a list of items with a particular item tag. And if I was starting from scratch, uh, I could actually start from the copy tag, uh, the copy tag, copy map source. Um, but I already have another template that has all the columns that I want. So and I don't really want to rebuild it. So I can use that, I can clone that template and um, get the information that I want with nullability. So I can see here by looking at the IDL that the copy tags um, source here, the link here is the name is tags and I can go down here and I can say it says has many. So now I know that it's gonna be a left join on that table. 
And so that I don't end up with a bunch of stuff that has no copy tags in it, because I only, I'm only interested in values that match uh, the, a, a particular copy tag, I can go ahead and tell it I want you to be non nullable and I want it to be an inner join. So that, uh, and this populates automatically. So once you select non nullable and, uh, and navigate into that table, it will tell you right away, okay, you're doing an inner join on this, on this table, which is helpful. So this is an example of a real life template that we have on copy tags. So it's, we've got the copy tags, uh, all the stuff here. So the label, the value, um, then the copy tag type and code. Um, I'm already doing this inner join on the copy tag table. Uh, so I don't really need to do another one on the copy tag type table. Uh, but if I really wanted to be um, thorough about it, I could look up what that what the join is on on that particular thing. And then here's my filter. So I want to filter on the value and a substring on that field. So uh, here's another use case. List items by shelving location or whatever that includes items with uh, no circ modifier. So this is kind of one of the examples that I brought up in the beginning. Uh, and this is actually something that uh, until I started researching this presentation, I it, we, our reports were doing. <laughs> uh, we had been pulling in the name of the circ modifier uh, into our into our reports, but then we kind of realized I kind of realized after we were we were we had been doing that for a while that um, oh well we're actually excluding a bunch of the stuff in here that has circ modifier that would be relevant. So uh, looking at the at the IDL, we can see that um, if we use the linked circ modifier, uh, it's assuming that it's doing it's doing an inner join because there's a has a here. So I'm going to be missing all the stuff that has no circ modifier. Okay, so if I wanted to keep what I had, I'm going to have to change it to child nullable so that it's a left join, add the name again, and put it in my report. Now, one thing that uh, if you're if you're modifying a report that already exists, uh, you do have to take out the column that's already in there. Uh, if, if you want to change the type of join that you're making on it. Uh, you can't have the column joining in both ways. Um, so you'll have to take out the other one and then replace it with this value. Uh, and then there's a se second option on this uh, because of the way that circ modifier works. Uh, in our consortium, for the most part, the Circ modifier code is the same as the name on it. It's one of the few values where the sort of linking the primary key on the table is an alphanumeric value. So I can put um, the code in in uh, just the linked this linked value in here, and uh, have it show up as as an alphanumeric value uh, that you know an end user could recognize. <clears throat> so this sort of saved me from having to kind of play around with the nullability because I just, instead of, instead of uh, doing that, I just added the linked value to the templates that I was fixing. Uh, here's another use case. And this is one that I... I did talk about at the uh, when I did this presentation for the reports interest group. And I did want to bring it up again because it's an example of a right join. And it's also kind of illustrates some of the limitations of of what this can do. Uh, and limitation is sort of relative. In this case, the limitation worked for me, but in other cases it works against you. 
So here's an example here. I've got, I want a report that lists all fines for patrons that are blocked. And I want, but I want all patrons to be listed, even if they don't have fines. So there's no link from the, from uh, the, the ILS user source or the AU class to the billable transactions class uh, or billable transaction summary source. So I have to start from the billable transaction summary if I want to get uh, some of this information. And I do like this view because it gives you a little bit more of a top level kind of look at things. And, but I can see that AU is joined here and it's assuming that it has, it's, it's, an, it's going to create an inner join on this table. So it's assuming that it has a user. And if I run this by default, you can see that it creates that inner join on actor user. If I'm looking at the debugging results later on. So here is my little Venn diagram to sort of illustrate uh, how I kind of want things to work in this query. I want to be able to show all of the blocked users whether or not they have fines. So this is kind of the, the area here that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna, t I'm gonna give it some parameters that say, hey, show me the blocked patrons, but also show me all of their fines. Uh, or their, their billings. And uh, let's show how that sort of works. So we're, so in this instance, we're creating a right join. We're doing a parent nullable over here, creates the right join. And then uh, I've got the current library card here. I don't necessarily need to worry about that being, um, being, uh, being a null value, because uh, that's linked from build user which is already a right join. And then here in my, so in my, my fields here, I've got all of my right join, first name, last name, uh, the current library code, which is another link from, from that table. And then I've got a uh, home library and blocked as my filters. And something to be aware of is that if you are using nullability selection, on the display fields, you also need to make sure that you're using the same type of nullability selection everywhere you're using, you're, you're linking to that table. So in your display fields and in your filters, they, they all need to be the same. Otherwise you're gonna get an error when you try to run the report itself. So now that I've changed that, you can see that uh, from my debugging output, I've got a right outer join on actor.user and an inner join, an inner join on this table from actor.card, doesn't matter as much. Um, and that's about it for that. I, I didn't show you any results because this had like real patrons in it, so I didn't want to go there. Um, all right, so again, talking about the limitations. Uh, and as I said, if you're doing a, if you're using a filter from the link data source, um, I'm sorry, yeah. So uh, the, the limitations of this is uh, if you're using a filter from a linked data source, you're automatically going to be eliminating some data from the main data source. So in this example, we go back to the, to the Venn diagram here. Uh, I'm eliminating all, I, I'm only wanting to see the blocked users and, and their fines. So I don't care about any, any of the other stuff, but if this was, for example, I'm running a circulation report, I want to see all of the circulations, uh, everything in a particular shelving location that circled within, you know, within the last month. I'm going to be eliminating anything that didn't circulate within the last month. So I can use nullability in this case, but I'm only going to be showing values that appear that that don't have any that don't have any other circulation so um, if i use nullability in that in that case uh, what i'm going to be seeing is uh, stuff that never had never circulated at all plus the stuff that circulated within that time frame 
and I'm going to be eliminating anything that has circulations outside of that time frame. And there are ways to get that data with SQL, but they're not built into the Evergreen Reporter. So uh, if you're interested in that kind of data, you might have to work with your support team um, who has direct database access to get you that information or kind of fill it in on your own based on the results that you're getting back. All right, going back to this. So this is my list of resources. Uh, if you were lost at any point uh, during this, although we can try to, to uh, answer some questions uh, during the, the question section as well, um, I do encourage you to um, take a look at Chris Sharp's presentations from the 2020 and 2021 conference. Um, and, uh, you know, he does, he does a really good job of laying out the, the background of uh, between and the relationship between SQL and the reporter. Uh, so I really encourage you to look at that. Um, of course, there's always the official evergreen documentation on, uh, on reports and uh, shameless plug for the reports interest group. Uh, we meet monthly and we talk about reports and uh, we meet we meeting tomorrow. Uh, at 1.30 during the conference. And um, for more information about SQL, uh, the W3 Schools tutorial is pretty good. And uh, for some practical examples, uh, another thing that I added <laughs> during this conference uh, was is uh, Rogan's blog, em The Emerald Elephant. Uh, and now we enter into the questions portion of, uh, of the presentation. And I will stop sharing and go back. All right. So does anybody have any questions? <laughs> That took a lot less time than I thought it would. <laughs> uh, only as ever used templates, what was the XML data we saw occasionally in your presentation and how does it relate to the GUI we saw? Okay, yeah, I, um, as I was going through that, I realized I kind of glossed over that part. So let me go back to that a little bit and, uh, and fill in some of that, that information for you. Uh, so the FMIDL is a, it, it's available on pretty much any evergreen system. Uh, let me go, let me, let me share again. And you can even look at it for you know, test systems and things like that, if for some reason you can't get to it for your own system. So uh, the IDL is sort of like a, a framework for how the, the client talks to the database. Uh, other folks might have a better explanation of, of how it actually all hangs together. Um, but if you go to um, your domain, and this URL here, you'll be able to see your the the IDL for your own install. So, for example, I do have linked here the one for one of the community servers. And you might need to look at the page source. I'm on Firefox here. in order to see it. And this is not nefarious. This is all like, um, you know, this needs to be exposed for, for people to write APIs. And um, it's also, you know, kind of already out there in the source code anyway. Um, so if I was looking at, for example, uh, uh, 
aged and active circulations. So this is essentially the building blocks for what you would see. Oh, this is a slim version. Hold on. Okay. So this is the, this is the one in the report. So it says it's a, it's a, it's a reporter core true reporter label. So this is the label that you would see in the drop down menu when you're looking at the sources in the reporter. And this stuff here is all the stuff that is either linked or a field that's available in that core source. So we were looking at the shelving location as an example. And let's see, is there here shelving location? It's the, we can see here that the data type is a link and that would show when you were building a report in the, in, in, or a report template in the reporter. And then again, we've got, uh, let's see, what's some stuff here that's not links. Um, org unit special type of link, but it's essentially a link to the, the org unit table. Um, yeah, we've got, yeah, checkout date. That would be the time, the, you know, a timestamp, that kind of thing. So these are all the fields that would be available in there. And then the link <clears throat> sort of indicates that it would be a link to another source, which is also defined in the IDL. And then the links down here indicate how the linked table or linked source is uh, linked to that table. So if it says has a, that means it's going to be an inner join. And if it says might have or has many, that would indicate a left join. Does that answer your question? Yeah, the, the database schema is another um, another good way to, to do it. Uh, and and to be honest, um, you know, I've been of late. I had an example recently where the where libraries were sort of interested in finding any patrons that they had that didn't have an address. Uh, they just kind of, uh, we just kind of had a, a, someone report that they weren't, a, that they needed, wanted the setting re a, uh, enabled, that they would not be able to put in an address, uh, they, that they would, uh, I'm sorry, that address would be required and staff wouldn't be able to clear, to register a patron without more than one address. So uh, I built a report template where um, that would show patrons that had null addresses and rather than looking it up in the XML, I just kind of assumed, or I, I just like, I was like, I'm just going to tell it I want it to do a left join right out the gate, leave out the guesswork, and put it in there. So this is not to say that you have to look at that all the time, because I don't. Uh, this is kind of just to illustrate how these, how the joins, how it decides what joins to make on, on those tables. Uh, and it's another resource if you really want it to be good about looking things up. Oh, thank you, Michelle, for, for linking that uh, to the ideal. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Thank you, Taryn, for sharing that URL. Yes, the slides will be shared, Ruth. If you clone a template that has, I'm looking at Susan's question now, if you clone a template that has a note that nullability selection is enabled, does that carry over or do you need to re-input those parameters? Um, yes, that should carry over. The note though might be, if it's in the description or something like that, you might still wanna check on it just to make sure because that's not, if it's, if there's a note on, in, the, in the description, you know, that's not auto-populated by anything. That's just the user putting in a note to themselves. <laughs> so uh, you might wanna just check it out just in case it was cloned from a previous version that had that and then that got taken out. Uh, but yes, it does, if you clone a template, it does carry over any nullability selection that was already in there.
Do you mind if I plug your interest group discussion? That's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to talk more about reports, uh, Jessica is also the head of the reports interest group, which uh, there's going to actually be a discussion during the conference tomorrow on Thursday at 1.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time. That's going to be in track two as well. So uh, I highly encourage anyone who wants to be part of that conversation to join. All right, I I can hang around for other questions for for a little while if anybody is uh, is interested. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> well, I think we have one question in chat. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can wrap my head around how the nullability dropdown next to the nested sources changes the query. How does the nullability drop down next to the top source table change the query? I haven't played around with that. I, I kind of don't, uh, anybody who knows more about this can correct me, but I kind of don't think that it has any effect on the top level source. I think it would only have an effect on any of the linked sources. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think it's just not disabled for that top level source. Um, yeah, it would be lovely if um, in a future version, perhaps <laughs> there would be some indication of what that default join on the on the link table was, uh, and then we wouldn't have to look at the IDL. <laughs> or, uh, you know, make any, any educated guesses. Oh, Elizabeth's looking for the URL for the classes. Let me just drop that in to chat. And this one, you kind of have to know what the abbreviation for the class is. So I know off the top of my head that asset copy is ACP, <laughs> uh, but I don't know too many of the other ones. I think user is AU. So you'd have to uh, you'd have to know that stuff. And I didn't uh, end up picking up the prerequisite um, XKCD cartoon. I feel like there should be one for the subject. But uh, I couldn't find one. So if you can find one, send it to me later. <laughs> yes, that's a good point, Michelle. You can, and I, I do that all the time. I, I did that when I was just demoing it before, um, just doing a control F and, and searching for the, uh, searching for the name of the source and it will come up. Oh, that's a good tip, Rogan. Uh, use the field mapper names as SQL abbreviations, and it will keep you in the habit of using them. For example, asset.copy is ACP. Oh, yes, little Bobby tables <laughs> is a good one for, for SQL. Uh, we're doing mostly selects with the reporter, though. So 